A sampling distribution is the probability distribution of a sample statistic that is formed when samples of size n are repeatedly taken from a population. If the sample statistic is the sample mean, then the distribution is the sampling distribution of sample means. Every sample statistic has a sampling distribution. Sample statistic, remember that? Sample statistic are characteristics, numerical characteristics for your samples. Let us take a look at our simulation. So here you have your population. This is population distribution. And we're going to take samples, random samples from this population and find the means of those samples and graph them here. So I'm going to take sample of size 15 and I'm going to repeat this process. Samples taken, one, two, just keep repeating this process. Samples taken is four, five, six, seven, and we're just going to keep repeating this process. And we are creating a new distribution. This new distribution is about the means of your samples. So you are taking samples from this population and finding the means and you graph them. So as you can see, this new distribution is thinner than the first and original distribution. Very well. So properties of sampling distributions. First of all, the mean of sample means, which is denoted by mu sub x bar, is equal to the population mean mu. So the mean of sample means is equal to the mean of the population. And two, the standard deviation of this new distribution of the sample means sigma sub x bar is equal to the population standard deviation sigma divided by the square root of sample size, which is a. So sigma sub x bar is equal to sigma divided by square root of a. Actually, this is called the standard error of the mean. Take a look at your distribution. As you can see, the means are the same, but standard deviation of the second, second distribution is smaller. The first distribution is more varied, and this distribution has smaller variability. Well, central limit theorem, what does it tell us? If samples of size n, n must be greater than equals to 30, are taken from any population with a mean mu and a standard deviation sigma, then the sampling distribution of sample means approximates a normal distribution. The greater the sample size, the better the approximation. Two, if the population itself is normally distributed, then the sampling distribution of sample means is normally distributed for any sample size n. So we're not worried about the sample size. So the mean 
of sample means is equal to the mean of the population and the standard deviation of sample means is equal to the standard deviation of population over square root of n. So our first example says, interpreting the central limit theorem. Assume the training heart rates of all 20-year-old athletes are normally distributed with a mean of 135 beats per minute and the standard deviation of 18 beats per minute, as shown in the figure below. Random samples of size four. So what is this four, guys? Is it X? Is it mean? Is it standard deviation? Is it N? What is that? N. N. Very good. This is your size. Sample size four are drawn from this population and the mean of each sample is determined. Find the mean and standard deviation of sampling distribution of sample means, then sketch a graph of sampling distribution. In this example, on page two, n is equal to four. What else do you have? The standard deviation. The standard deviation, which is? Um, I think it's 18. 18, very good, 18 bits. What else is given? Very well. Excellent mean. Thank you, Max. Mean is also given 135. Mean is given 135. What else is given? You have a condition here. You have a very good condition. It says it is normally distributed. It is normally What's the meaning of that? It means that when you're checking the central limit theorem, you're not worried about the sample size. So note that when we are checking the central limit theorem, we are not worried about the sample size, sample size. Very well. So central limit theorem says you have a distribution which is normal and you are taking samples of size four. When you are creating a new distribution, the distribution for sample means. First of all, central limit theorem says for sure this is a normal distribution. This is a new distribution which is normal. What is the mean of this new distribution? The mean of this new distribution is equal to the mean of the population. What, what is the mean of the population? What is the mean of the population? What do you have? Mean of Very good. The mean of the population is 135. 135. What about the standard deviation? Sigma sub x bar. What about this one? 18. Is it equal to standard deviation of population or is it smaller? Eight, eight. Um, yes. It is smaller. Excellent. So remember the formula. You have sigma divided by square root of n. Your sigma or standard deviation of your population is 18. 18 divided by square root of n which is four, we get 18 divided by two or nine. This is smaller. This is a smaller number. It means that we get less variability. Let us take a look at the graph. So 
this is the graph of your population. The mean is 135 with standard deviation equals to 18. Now you are forming, you are forming a sampling distribution of sample means with mean, which is exactly the same as the mean of your population, 135, and standard deviation is smaller. It is nine. So you can say that, hey, from the central limit theorem, since the population is normally distributed, the sampling distribution of sample means is also normally distributed. And this is the graph. Very well. So next example. The figure at right shows the length of time people spend driving each day. You randomly select 50 drivers ages 15 to 19. What is the probability that the mean time they spend driving each day is between 24.7 and 25.5 minutes? Suppose that the standard deviation is equal to 1.5 minutes. So since it says 15 to 19, the mean, the mean is equal to 25 minutes. So let us get back to board, write down all the information. So we are on page three. Central limit theorem. Okay. So in this example, what do we have? What is your n? What is the mean? What is the standard deviation? And what are you looking for? What is your goal? What are you calculating? So what is your n? n is equal to 50 drivers. What is the mean? Since the question says ages 15 to 19, it means that the mean is equal to 25 minutes. What about the standard deviation? Standard deviation is 1.5. Very good. Excellent. 1.5 minutes. So what is our goal? What are we looking for? We're looking for the probability, the probability that, the probability that, what is the probability? Guys, I'm waiting on you. What, what are you looking for? Is there a CDF? No, no distribution CDF. Okay. What are you looking for? What is this? The probability of, is it X, is it Z? The probability that, the probability that, take a look at the question. The probability that, the mean time, they spend driving each day is between 24.7 and 25.5. This is your goal. How do you translate that in mathematical form? What do you write? You're looking for? The probability that the mean time x x bar is in between twenty four point seven twenty four point seven and 
5.5. Okay, very well. Here you have n equals to 50. So you cannot just directly use your calculator because n is 50. We have to deal with 50. We, have, we are working with the mean time, mean time between these two numbers. So what are we going to do? We're going to use central limit theorem. So we are using central limit theorem. So first you have to check the conditions of central limit theorem. What is your n? n is 50. Is it greater than or equal to 30? Yes. So the first condition is met. It means that if you start taking samples and finding the mean of the samples, the mean of the sample means is equal to the mean of the population, the mean of the population, which is 25 minutes, and the standard deviation, standard deviation of this new sampling is equal to standard deviation of your population divided by square root of n. So what is your sigma? 1.5 divided by square root of n, which is very well. So what do we have? Let's do the calculation. It is 0 0.2121. Okay, now you have your information. Now you can use your calculator. So you're finding the probability that your x bar is in between these two values by using the new information that you have. Okay. Let us check our calculator. Next.